I'm talking to the MD of Novartis, Peter Cook, and uh, we want to look to understand what this business does and what's its potential. Pete, thanks for joining us. Peter, good morning. Um, look, Novartis is a leading digital banking and payments company. We've got uh, a lot of our own fintech technology that we've developed over a number of years. We've got a range of financial licenses, uh, actually about 100 staff in Australia and mm. about uh, a dozen overseas. Um, and, and, and in fact, a very experienced management team. And we are really focused on um, building a business that, that uh, uh, leverages the growth in, in digital payments. Mm. And, and essentially helping consumers and businesses and merchants um, uh, uh, operate much more efficiently in, in a, a digital world. Yeah, and it's becoming an increasingly digital payments world, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, who are your key customers? So key customers are pr uh, break into a couple of groups. Um, one, a lot of other fintechs and banks, interestingly enough. Mm -hmm. So we are in some some cases sort of the Intel inside. So we're, we're doing uh, payments processing and, and uh, integrating to other payments companies. Um, and, and then a lot of our other uh, customers are more like merchants and small businesses. Mm -hmm. And, and we have some consumer customers uh, and a lot of our partners uh, have, have consumer customers. So, uh, for instance, uh, we are a, a visa issuer. Uh, we got that license about a year ago. Um, you know, very difficult uh, to get to, to be accredited by a visa. Uh, so we can either to businesses or consumers or to other fintechs can issue visa cards and and you know allow them to, to make all those payments. Do, do you work in competition with the well-known names like Afterpay or Zip, um, or do you work with them? Um, uh, you know, in, in a sense, providing services that they don't provide. Uh, uh, definitely the latter. That we we'd be working with them. Um, you, you know, as an example, Afterpay and Zip, absolutely outstanding companies in the buy now, pay later and mm. uh, uh, sector and, you know, driving um, new methods of providing credit to, to consumers. Um, we are more in the background for a company like them where we'd be providing services mm. or, say, in the case of cross-border payments with uh, companies that are specialist in that, we're providing technology or compliance services. Okay, so if someone wants to understand the potential for your business, would they be thinking, given this explosive growth, and it seems to be like a new payments company being created on the stock market nearly every week, yeah. is that sort of saying that the world has changed forever when it comes to digital payments, and therefore a business like yours should be well positioned to benefit? Yeah, so, so actually, um you know, we used to say, when did you last make a payment by a cheque? Mm. You could now nearly say, when did you last make a payment by cash? Yeah. And, right. um, and so COVID has really driven that. It's just accelerated that. Mm. Um, I, I think in, in our case, uh, whilst there are many payments companies coming along and, and they're sort of solving, you know, problems that uh, maybe in the past banks addressed or they're, they're new things. So for instance, making payments from a marketplace to, to a supplier to that marketplace. Um, but uh, you, you know, we, we have uh, a lot of technology and financial licenses and, and people that are just focused on solving those problems. And, and as I said, in many cases for, for other fintechs, we're, we're actually bring, helping them come to market. Mm. So like, you're like an infrastructure company for many of those businesses. Uh, Yes, yeah, so, so much of our revenues is, it looks like infrastructure or Intel inside mm. revenue. So last year we did a bit under $12 million of revenue. Mm. Um, most of that in one way or another is recurring or close to recurring. Um, some from technology, some from financial processing and much of it is, is us providing services to other hmm. payments type companies. Now also the age of Bitcoin and um these digital currencies. Digital assets, yes. Yeah. Um, what is your involvement with that, that, that part of you know, the, the tech sector? So uh, in terms of digital assets, 
we're sort of uh, focused on that in a few different ways. One is in research and development. So we actually do, have been doing a lot of R&D about uh, integrating into some of the uh, crypto gateways, uh, holding digital assets, um, thinking about conversion of digital assets to more normal currencies, fiat currencies, mm. and and how people can, can pay with digital assets. Now at the moment we haven't seen much of that in Australia and, and in fact, but, but again it's another trend that's accelerating. People talk about digital gold or whatever so I think uh, that there's, there's an awareness and awakening that this is a new asset class or method of moving money so, so there's an R&D focus. Uh, we've recently announced a partnership with a company called Ripple. So Ripple's uh, currency is called XRP. It is the third largest of the digital currencies and it's got a market cap I think of about 26 or 7 billion US at the moment. Only a trick 26 or 27 billion. That sounds US. very much like yes. a Bitcoin company doesn't that, it? That's right but yeah. but but it's it's utilitarian in the sense that, that our working with Ripple they have about 300 banks and financial services companies around the world that, that use their network to move money and so we want to be, in many ways, their man in Australia mm. for um, uh, both sending funds uh, from Australia and back into Australia for, you know, cross-border payments. Mm. It, it seems to me that you, 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 you're not a one-trick pony. You're looking at the digital fu future and you're saying, where can we perform functions and services uh, to tap into the growth? Uh, absolutely. So. Um, we do have uh, a, a number of you know, revenue stream pillars, what we call issuing for payment cards for acquiring where we take payments for merchants. We do a lot of uh, uh, subscription billing which is to help companies with complex invoicing problems and, and cross-border payments. Uh, but, but again, if, if just going back to revenues, last year a bit under 12 million. Um, we've been growing at about 50% a year for the last three years. And, you know, we are uh, internally sort of uh, obviously focused on trying to keep uh, those sorts of growth rates going. Mm. And, and uh, you know, taking technology, licenses, our uh, business processes and people, and, and uh, absolutely helping others uh, get into that economy. Okay, so as we approach Christmas, how would you describe the year for Novati? So, so th this year just passed, mm -hmm. we would say it, it's been one of building momentum. Um, the, the building blocks of adding capability, uh, whether it be technology or licenses, and particular international partnerships. And uh, Ripple, um, China Union Pay, uh, Samsung Pay, Google Pay, um, uh, late last year visa, so so basically peering up with some of these uh, global partnerships, and then I think what we'll see next year is that we'll, we'll be able to bring revenues through from those let's call it partnership building blocks. Mm. So this year, one of you know building momentum, um, focusing on on just that continual sustained uh, revenue growth rate, and uh, in fact, in our last uh, quarterly announcement, we were on a normalised uh, basis EBITDA positive, which was a first, and um, you, you know we want to keep driving those financial results. Mm. Okay, so finally then, if we look at this year as being like a stay-at-home year, and 2021 becomes like a, a road back to normalcy, yes. um, is the company going to benefit from that, do you think? So, so inter yes, I, I mean, COVID has driven in a thematic sense, it's driven uh, th this growth or, or this acceleration into digital payments. From Novati's point of view, we, we've actually built our business in this time. We've hired about 20 staff in the last uh, 12 weeks, mm. including a couple of uh, outstanding senior executives. Um, we, we've been able to add some of these partnerships and, and we, we actually want to really drive on next year, so we're trying to accelerate. Yeah, it is amazing that a number of businesses I'm talking to are actually looking at 2021 with an enormous positivity and uh, it's going to be interesting to see whether that comes to fruition. I think it will, but it's going to be very interesting. Yeah. I, I mean, actually, uh, one other good thing for us is we did a, uh, a significant fundraising in the middle of the year and, and we've still got, we, we raised $10 million and it's still on our balance sheet. And so, from our point of view, we, 
like we're still saying we're fully funded and in fact we're, we're actually using that funding to try and drive growth again. So yes, 2021, uh, uh, we've got the balance sheet and, and the team to, and, and some of the partnerships to, to really go and execute. Well, Peter, good luck. Thanks for joining us. Peter, thank you. That's Peter Cook, MD of Novartis.